This is the 2021 Mazda 6 Carbon Edition. Now there's not a lot of changes for 2021, but there are some cool updates that you want to take a look at before you go for a test drive. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lauren Fix. If this is your first time to the channel, we do more than just car reviews. We give you first looks at new vehicles and we give you ways to save money and we give you car smarts because we believe knowledge is power. Subscribe and click that little bell so you don't miss anything. This is the 2021 Mazda 6 and yet it's absolutely freezing out here. It's like 10 degrees, but I wanted to bring this car to you because there are some changes for 2021 and this carbon edition is really cool. Now it's not carbon fiber, but part of it is the color and you can see the mirrors fold in automatically on their own and when you hit the unlock button it opens on its own kind of neat but that's pretty normal for pretty much every vehicle in this category and this category is pretty rich with a lot of good products the sonata the camry the civic so what do you need to look at before you buy this car so what you need to know is when you go to the dealer they're going to try and sell you on this vehicle we're going to give you information in 10 different categories and in the end we'll give you a car coach reports total this information is for you so when you go to the dealer to test drive the car you won't be overwhelmed with all the information they're trying to sell you on this vehicle you'll go in with some information and have some car smarts we're going to cover 10 different categories in the end we'll give you a car coach reports total so you can compare it against the competition and down below will be a list of the competitors and reviews that we've done so you can see for yourself what meets your needs because we don't want you to have buyer's remorse we're going to cover performance handling safety visibility seating comfort both first and second row technology features design quality cargo space value and in the end we'll give you a car coach reports total and this will give you some great information so that you feel empowered to buy the right vehicle for you let's take it for a drive under the hood is a 2.5 liter inline four-cylinder turbocharged engine if you run the premium gas you'll get the best performance which is 250 horsepower and 320 pound feet of torque just so you know there is no cvt on this engine it's got an eight-speed automatic transmission and that i prefer all right zero to 66.3 seconds here we go Ooh, did you hear that whoa that's a wicked pull that's the tires not giving grip that is not the vehicle so these vehicles are obviously not designed for it. let me stop again and do this one more time in sport mode zero to 60 6.3 seconds here we go that's much better here we go <laughs> i'm having way too much fun all right zero to 60 times 6.3 seconds this car has some really good pickup and that's in the sport mode and we're not going to drive it that way every single day so what we're going to do is we're going to bring it down to the normal mode and drive it normally so you can get a feel for what it's like if you own this car i do believe that most people will not be using the paddle shift if you choose to do it it's pretty simple you just use the paddle shift if you want to go back to the normal mode just move that shifter to the left then back to the right and it goes back into your normal automatic mode it has really good pickup now i think it's the turbocharger there is a little bit of lag not that much but i'll tell you what it does have really good pickup in just the normal mode obviously when you put it into sport mode that changes a few things the shift points and the performance of the motor now to get the maximum performance out of this vehicle you do need to have premium gas otherwise you're looking at about 227 horsepower so if you decide to go with the cheaper gas that's what happens so you can see right away that it has pretty good pickup and that i think is good anytime you're driving a vehicle you should get comfortable with the performance in a normal mode rather than in the high performance mode now as we drive this around town and we've been driving this vehicle for a week we get a good feel for this vehicle how does it handle and perform on a regular basis whether it's on an on-ramp or just driving around every day the performance is excellent and in this category it earns a performance score of nine as we go into some of the s curves on one of my favorite little routes here you can see that this vehicle is pretty flat handling and i'm impressed with that right away this is a front wheel drive vehicle i wish it had all wheel drive in this particular case but it is available on certain trim levels for mazda so make sure to do your research before you go and buy other brands have it across the lineup so it's up to you to find what works for you 
When you're looking at handling, it does have dynamic stability control, and that's important because that'll give you better feel for the roadway. There is also trash control in this vehicle, and I think that's important as well. And I think when you're buying a vehicle like this, you're looking at the competition, it's the handling that's important. You want to look at the braking, and the brakes are really good actually. I, I'm impressed with the brakes compared to some of the others in the category. Sometimes they're spongy. This has a nice firm pedal. Also the handling is really easy to drive this car. It's actually kind of fun to drive this car but Mazda makes the Miata, the MX-5 if you haven't driven one. What a blast and we've reviewed that. You can check that out up here as well as the other Mazda SUVs like the CX-5 which is a very very popular vehicle and so when you're looking at Mazda as a whole, their handling has always been what they used to call zoom zoom. They changed it all, but their performance has always been a lot of fun. And I think that's really, really important. Now, when you're looking at a vehicle like this and you're talking about its handling compared to the competition, I think it does a really good job. The competitors have different features. They call them different things, but it's important that you test drive each of these vehicles and then of course find your pricing and everything else we talk about throughout to find the vehicle that fits your needs best. But when you're looking at this Mazda 6, which I really like, I, I just love this, the whole package and how they par put it together for handling, it earns an eight. When you're looking at safety for a vehicle like this, you've got blind spot detection, you have lane change departure. There's a lot of great safety that's standard in this vehicle. You're not buying up into safety, and I think that's good. You've got the pedestrian cross traffic alert. Everyone calls it something different, but one of the things I think that you use every day is when you back out of a parking spot, it has rear cross traffic alert, and that should be standard on every vehicle, and it isn't necessarily available in every vehicle. And I think it's really important for people to get a feel for something like this, because when you're using this vehicle every single day, you want good brakes and good handling. When you're using a vehicle like this, obviously safety is a top priority. You're hauling your family. It does have an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the highest rating. Those are the people that do the offset crash test ratings. And you can look at safercar.gov to get all of it together. And that's a good site to go to to get a good feel for the safety ratings of any vehicle. So when you're looking at a vehicle like this, as far as safety, it's pretty impressive. You don't have to buy up for safety. It doesn't have every safety feature that maybe the Honda or the Toyota offer, but it does have a full suite of them and they're standard with Mazda and therefore for safety, it earns an eight. When you're looking at visibility, there's a very large front windshield. Now remember, visibility is 80% of your driving decisions. So no matter all the cool safety that we talked about, visibility is going to be critical. So nice big windshield, the sills are a good height, but looking at the back, you can see there is headrests in the way. And that kind of limits it. It's part of this mid-size sedan look. You can't really do much about that. So you say, well, why not your backup camera? Well, it does have a standard backup camera. There is an optional around view camera, which is not on our test vehicle. But when you're looking at visibility overall, your ability to see the road, where you're going and make good decisions, it deserves an eight. When you're looking at seating, I think this is a very important feature for everyone. You have to be comfortable in the seat and it has to be built for however you're built. Now, the number one thing I always tell people is you want to look for this adjustable height seat belt. Why do you want that? Because you don't want the seat belt cutting your neck. So adjust it however you need. If it doesn't have it, like some models don't, not of Mazda, but of other brands and competitors, you need to keep that in mind. Does it fit for you? And again, we're all built differently. When it comes to the seats themselves, the driver's seat is pretty comfortable. Love this red leather, by the way, which we'll talk about in features as one of the options. This seat has some adjustment and especially lumbar. And both seats are heated three stage and air cooled, which is really a great value when it comes to this vehicle overall. A heated steering wheel, which I need in this really cold temperatures. The passenger seat, is not as comfortable, unfortunately. It's comfortable, but there's no lumbar. Now, I don't have a back problem, but I want to be comfortable, and that's a big factor. Before we give it a rating, let's take a look at the second row. Back here in the second row, there is really good knee room. Now, when you're looking at this based on the competition, I did set the seat for me on 5'8", and you can see that this really good knee room, a little bit limiting on the headroom, but that's part of the design. And the shoulder room seems pretty good, especially if you've got two people back here. But it is a little tighter in comparison to the competition, and that's something you need to keep in mind. Now, when you pull this center armrest down, there is 
two heated rear seats that are three stage. Very impressive. Cup holders in the back and a little storage area with USB connections. Two more. I think this is a great idea and I think it's important when people sit back here are comfortable. Behind the center console there is two vents. That's it. When you're looking at seating overall, the comfort of this is good. The person sitting in the center may not be as comfortable, it would be tight, but you can put two child safety seats. There is not an attachment on the latch system for three, which is probably a good idea. So two child safety seats would fit back here. But when you're looking at overall, the design, the style, what's here, the storage, this Bose speaker, you're looking at a seating comfort of seven. When you're looking at technology, it starts off with this eight inch screen. Yeah, it's a little dated and the software that you can see as far as this easy to use system is kind of dated. So when you press the home button, that's what you get. So you have your applications, your music, your communication, your navigation, your settings. Even the navigation is a bit on the dated side. You'll see it takes a while for it to load up and then we're still using lines and dots essentially, but it does have the ability for you to touch the screen. And that I give them a lot of credit for because not every manufacturer has that. Also in addition, the 11 speaker Bose premium audio system is excellent. I think they did a great job with that. And again, these controls have not changed over the many years. So if you've owned a Mazda in the past, you feel very comfortable. Now you'll note that in front of you, these gauges are regular gauges. And actually I like that versus the digital. Yes, they're not adjustable, but what you're getting is real gauges. And if you have this vehicle as a used car, especially down the road, you'd be glad you have real gauges because if those digital components fail, those major main screens, you won't be able to drive the car because you won't be able to tell what your speed limit is. Now this part of it is adjustable here and so you can make some adjustments to the different modes that you want. But the fact is it's got the information that you need and that's more important than anything. When you're looking at this vehicle, including the adaptive front lighting, the head up display, which I don't know if you can see that here. In addition to the head up display, which I think is a big improvement over their previous version, and I do like what they've done with this, except I wish they would upgrade the center screen. When it comes to technology, it earns a seven. When you're looking at the features of this vehicle, it has five exterior colors. Ours is that poly metal gray. And you start looking at some of the controls, very easy to use. This is not unusual, simple controls for volume and information. You can adjust what you want, your phone. And then over here, this is for your distance control and your cruise control, really easy to use. Uh, there's also these plastic paddle shifters. I don't know who's actually using them, but I guess you can. And then you've got your regular controls over here, your turn signal, your headlights, and of course your wiper blades. Very easy to use, nothing unusual. Everything here is easy to use. I do like this nice grippy steering wheel, by the way, nice and thick. I do love this red stitching, a little feature that goes along with the carbon package and a lot of really nice detail. Some basic controls here. You do not have memory seats something to keep in mind even in this carbon edition at this price point some of the competitors do have that you should also note that one of the features that is standard on this mazda is a sunroof which i think is something that a lot of people would like it is a manual sunroof so it's something to keep in mind the basic controls and vents and again this really neat stitching going into the chrome really nice and of course your bose audio and tons of storage here in this pocket Standard glove box, nothing unusual, just a nice glove box. And when it comes to these controls, you can see I've got the heated steering wheel and the seats cranked because it's cold outside. This is your normal controls and that's great because it makes it really easy to use. And I think that's important. You got some nice storage here. It's no wireless charging is available. You've got your regular controls, park, reverse, drive, your manual mode here. And then you've got the sport mode button. Now, if you press it forward, you go into sport mode. Otherwise it goes out of sport mode, nothing that unusual. And then of course you've got your parking brake, your auto hold, which a lot of people like. That means that when you're sitting at a traffic light, you can take your foot off the brake and a vehicle won't roll. You've got your multimedia interface here, your home button, your navigation, music, go forward, your favorites, and of course the volume control. Inside here, we've got this nice little cover for your cup holder, most you'll leave it open. And then this little small glove box here you can see, and there's some additional charging ports, which I think is important. A lot of people like to put their phone away. There is wireless Apple CarPlay and there is Android Auto. And I think that is a huge addition because not everybody is offering wireless Apple CarPlay. 
these controls are really easy to use and it's something that's very intuitive. Now, as far as trim levels, there's Signature Carbon Edition, which we have here, Sport, Touring, and Grand Touring Reserve. When it comes to features overall, and there are quite a few, this vehicle deserves an eight. When it comes to design, I gave up and put on some gloves. It's really cold out here. The front end of the Mazda 6 has really improved with the Carbon Edition. What they did is they blacked out the headlight assembly. They blacked out the grill. And I like how they've really made this a clean, sporty look. But it looks different than its competitors because what they did is they made a very distinctive, clean-looking sedan that's mid-sized but also has some muscular features so first thing you'd note is it's got a splitter on the front and i think it's nicely done and by the way i love this color this poly carbon gray it is part of the carbon edition and no it has nothing to do with carbon fiber but it's really cool the chrome continues along here it's black underneath here it's not matte actually i'm kind of surprised the grill is because you don't want to pick up all that dirt and you can see some of the salt on the roadways because i've been testing this vehicle for a week also, you'll note the LED headlights and daytime running lights or DRLs, really nicely done in the chrome detail right here. The Carbon Edition comes standard with these black 19-inch wheels, really nicely done. Now, we have winter tires, but it also comes with an all-season tire. The manufacturers deliver vehicles to us up here in the north because we know we have snow with snow tires, which is really smart. So you would need snow tires to get the best traction. Keep that in mind. Also note these muscular fenders. The line continues down and the black caps are standard on the Carbon Edition. You'll note the chrome trim continues from the front so it matches that detail and a little bit of blackout on the pillars. I think it's nicely done. Very classy style. And of course, you move your way back to these muscular fenders in the back. As you work your way around the black, this black little spoiler is standard on the Carbon Edition. Again, a little sportier, a little muscular. Chrome trim across the back with the Mazda logo, Mazda 6, Turbo, Sky Active, and two chrome tailpipes. Overall, the design of this car is really nice, and I give it a 9. When you're looking at the quality of this vehicle, it's not just the cool colors that Mazda offers. They do offer colors that you don't see in other brands, like this poly carbon gray and the red interior. The material quality on the inside is excellent. Really impressive for this price point. And you're looking at a really low entry point to this vehicle, but you're getting quality components. Where they're lacking is maybe some of the technology as far as quality, the screen, and just the interface in general. But overall, the quality of build and what you're getting for your money is a great value. And for quality, it earns a nine. When you come around to the back of the vehicle, you'll find 50 cubic feet of storage and there is a spare which is excellent because not every car includes a spare it's underneath this carpeted pad that says Mazda 6 huge space 60 40 split rear seats and that's excellent so you have an ability to haul whatever you need also keep in mind when you're looking at the value of this vehicle when you're talking about the carbon edition our test vehicle came in at 34 but these vehicles are coming in the mid-20s. So if you're just looking at a 2021 Mazda 6 and you're comparing it to the Sonata, the Camry, the Civic, and all the other vehicles which we list down below, you're going to see that this vehicle fits in really nicely. For some reason, the Mazda's overlooked. I've always been a fan of this product, and I think they do a great job. It has excellent value, and as far as quality and longevity, people that own them love them. So when you're looking at a value total for this vehicle, it comes in at a 9. Now, there are a lot of pluses and minuses for this vehicle. The interior quality and the build of this vehicle is excellent. Performance is really good, as we showed you, and the handling is good as well. What you're getting is an overall balanced car that has really good value. The negatives, no passenger side lumbar. Yes, you can get all-wheel drive. It's not on this vehicle, which would be nice in this cold weather. But when you're looking at this vehicle overall, it really has a lot of pluses, and it should be considered, and you should take it for a test drive. This gave it an overall car coach reports total of 82. Now, before you shut this video off, you might want to look down below. We will take your comments and questions. If you have additional questions, let us know. We will answer them. And if you got good value from this video, make sure to like it and share it with your friends. We want people to have knowledge and share in the community below in the comments. I do answer your questions and we always have a lot of fun. And there's more information on my website, Car Coach Reports. It's in English and Spanish. We have some new contributors, so make sure to check that out and other opinions of this vehicle as well. We want you to have a resource, a news place to go and get all your information at once. Also check out our podcast, Total Car Score. It's on all platforms with Carl Brower and Javier Mota. 
And of course, you can follow me on all forms of social media. I'm always putting out new information, what's new, what's hot, what's coming your way, and ways to save money, and how it impacts you. All platforms at Lauren Fix. All the information is down below, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much for watching.